Hello, hello. Today we're going to be talking about soul lessons with the Idaho Four. Well, and also other people involved in the general situation. Um, we've been talking about soul lessons a lot in my other readings and I feel as though a lot of you really like having that understanding of it gives a different viewpoint of the why like why was this person on a soul level in this situation what were they meant to learn how are they supposed to grow evolve through this experience so i wrote down a little bit um got the little information of how to kind of explain soul lessons a little bit more thoroughly and then we're going to go through and see which each person was meant to learn on a soul level from this situation. So starting off, there's a quote and it says, our greatest teachers, ease and pleasure do not prod us to evolve. It is our frustrations and sorrows that, like the grit in an oyster, fashion the pearl of becoming. Soul lessons are when we pause and create space to integrate the meaning of an experience in our lives. When we consciously ask, what did I learn from that experience and what happened to me? Repeated situations of the same theme are the greatest indicator that this is a main soul lesson for this lifetime. One that requires further clarity, perhaps from a different vantage point. One void of the emotional attachments that keep it tethered. A soul lesson unveils, not as one of eternal punishment, but an unlearned task in need of attention. This can span over several lifetimes, not just the one lifetime. A soul shift of your mindset assists in recognizing the value that the situation offers. As the universal cosmos evolves in accordance to the law of balance, guidance from your soul team as they nudge, reminding you of your soul's need to allow healing as you walk your path in the direction of your soul. The purpose of exploring life lessons is wholeness. As souls, we naturally have within us some energetic qualities, but not others. For example, if you are someone who is a dynamic go-getter who likes to do things fast, you may excel in dynamism, but you may also lack patience. And exploring a life lesson of patience could mean that you have many experiences here which teach you the value of patience. So this is the energetic quality that you begin to incorporate into your being on the soul level. It's a soul evolutionary process. So the experiences you have around this theme of patience change you slightly on the level of your soul, bringing you slightly closer towards a state of wholeness. When we are changed by life and become more whole as the result of the experiences that we have and the energetic qualities that we integrate, it is also thought that we also accelerate the evolution of and raise the vibration of the planet as well. So through our soul lessons, we're meant to gain several things. One is insights. So seeing your soul lessons from a higher vantage point. One is compassion, forgiveness for those who assist in the lesson and even for the soul pusher. We'll go over soul pusher in one second. Wisdom is seeing the lesson as just that not a punishment, but a lesson in order to allow for evolution. Growth, which means learning to trust your tools and your intuitive guidance. And new insights to heal the soul of all lifetimes, to gain peace through learning, how to respond to life, not how to react to life. So what does all that mean? The purpose of your soul lessons are to help you be your own leader and gain the wisdom through experiences by shifting from seeing them as a punishment to seeing them as a teacher or a learning opportunity. A soul pusher, as I mentioned, this is those who can cause us pain and hurt, but they also have a purpose. Forgiveness for the soul only not the personality, is the avenue of release and spiritual growth. So you're not forgiving the person per se. What needs to happen is to forgive the soul experience from that person, even if it causes hurt. Personalities are the characters that change with each lifetime. So the soul is eternal, here to grow, learn, and evolve. 
and to release karma and create balance without adding any additional baggage is the goal. So do harm to none. Forgiving the soul frees you from the situation and forgiveness allows that soul to also grow. So these soul lessons that we'll be looking into with the victims is essentially in their life review what they were meant to say, oh, I grew from this experience. I learned in this way. So although soul lessons can be challenging, the goal here is to learn to embrace them with gratitude as they do have a purpose. And seeing life from this perspective, looking at it in this way, allows you to move forward with grace and earn an evolved insight. So observing the roles that you and others play will increase your success because it allows you to see it from this perspective as these people are my teachers, even through pain, even through struggle, they are my teachers. And my soul said, I need to really learn this particular lesson in this lifetime. And without these harder moments, I wouldn't be able to do that. So that is a little rundown of what a soul lesson really is um, and how we're meant to integrate it into our lives. Now I'm going to grab the cards and see what the soul lessons are for the Eyes of the Forest. So the deck that I use to get the what I call soul lessons is the Spiritual Awakening. It's the Universal Laws. Um, so I'm going to read you what's in the book so that you know a little bit more about the Universal Laws and how they're viewing it and relating to it in this particular deck. Universal Laws are the way we manifest. They are the axioms of life. Universal laws are the modes of operation of the creative process of life, which is the unfolding of thought through universal laws into physical form. Universal laws work as a triune nature, spirit, soul, and body. Universal laws are informed and directed by spirit, aka your higher self or pure consciousness, which is the first cause of all creation. Universal laws are the way energy is formed into physical existence. Universal laws are the principles and physics of how we manifest and demonstrate. Universal laws are how the absolute is fractalized into the relative. Universal laws work without exception, equally and impersonally. So the same for all of us. The extent to which you create is in accordance with the universal laws is the degree to which you will experience your divine power. The extent to which you invert your use of energy and universal laws is the degree to which you will experience feeling powerless. Consciousness informs universal law through the soul and subjective mind and, in turn, informs universal law and energy in the physical realm. The extent to which you align with universal law or resist it is the extent to which you will experience being powerful. You can align with universal law and create heaven, or you can invert universal law and create hell. I'm going to pause so I can put a picture of this on the screen. So if you want to screenshot it, you can, and then we'll go into the pulling cards. So I'm going to pull all four and then I'm going to read the passage in the book for it so we can get as thorough of an understanding of the card as possible. We're going to start with Ethan, then Zana, then Maddie, then Kaylee. So I'm going to pull all four, then I'll pause and read the passage in the book. What is Ethan's soul lesson? The law of relativity. You are divinely perfect. Live your truth. Zana. The law of mentalism. Get clarity on your core values and commit to what matters. Maddie. The law of action. Get out of your comfort zone and take bold action today. Of course it is.
Kaylee. The law of perception. Look beyond the illusion to the one truth. I'm going to pull one for the four of them as a group. Like they're so like four coming here, their soul signed up to go through this experience. So they knew that they'd be going through it as four victims together. So what was the sole purpose of that soul contract? The law of karma, you are being called to a higher purpose. One, two, three, four main circles there too. Okay. All right, let me pause this because I have to find it in the book because there's no numbers on the cards. There, right, we're gonna start with Ethan which is the law of relativity. And I feel like the page numbers are maybe important minorly. So he's on page 11 and 12. You are divinely perfect, live your truth. What occurs on a microchasm level is what happens on the macrochasm level. Spiritual truth and universal laws are absolute truth. However, they can be individually used for a relative perspective and experience. People are endowed with the individual use of the one mind in the exact portion and distortion they choose at a soul level. Furthermore, your individual reality is a direct relation to the whole. Any situation where you are experiencing suffering is a blessing in disguise. It is your soul's way of communicating that you are not living in the absolute truth of who you are. Also, it is a divine experience for you to realize what works for you what does not work for you, and to live in alignment with your relative truth. This test is the great design of the personal factor of life. So Ethan's test was the personal factor of life. It is time for you to follow your heart and arrange life in a way that informs universal law into motion. It is time for you to wake up and claim a life of presence, passion, and purpose. Emancipation from suffering is your birthright. Where in life are you experiencing imposter syndrome? Do you alter who you are to fit into the world? Decide to be 100% authentically yourself and live your truth. Xana was the key that helped him do this. She helped him unlock the door to his authentic truth because She's an older soul and was able to guide him without guiding him to show him how to complete his whole lesson. Um, okay. Xana, one second. Okay, so Xana is the law of mentalism. Get clarity on your core values and commit to what matters. Everything begins in mind. The universe is a mental universe. There is one mind that interconnects everyone and everything. The first cause of all creation is born of this divine mind. As within, so without. Each person has been endowed with the individual use of this one mind. The, the individual experience is the condensed use via limiting beliefs and perceptions. The truth is that you have the infinite intelligence of the entire universe within. By drawing this card, your higher self desires for you to end judgment of others and yourself. The entire universe is connected through an omnipresent presence. The moment you perceive yourself separate, you experience feeling divided and powerless. At the energetic core, you unite with everyone and everything through the one mind. You are being asked to live in the mental state of gratitude. A creative medium surrounds you, receiving and reflecting the direct impression of your thoughts and acts accordingly to it. 
If you desire to experience your divinity, you must live in gratitude. Find a sacred space and take some time to write down all the things you are grateful for. Think of all the lessons and blessings in your life. Take time to energize the gratitude within until you are overwhelmed with an inspired action. So she was really learning how she creates the reality that she wants to see. And this, what I'm about to say, is not meant to be disrespectful. Um, recognizing that she didn't have to follow in the footsteps of the example set by her mom. And that she was able to focus on what she wanted to create in her life and go out and create it regardless of where she started from. Or regardless of the example that was set for her. And it's interesting because I feel as though Ethan helped Xana complete her lesson as much as the opposite is true. Um, because he gave her that safe space so that she could really focus on creating a, a more fulfilling path for her life. So I really think that each of them equally unlocked that door to a higher soul evolution for each other. I forgot to say it, but the Xana's Law of Mentalism was page 55 and 56. So now we're going to Maddie with the Law of Action, page 65 and 66. Wow, page 65 and 66. 66 is like the evil, you know, um, a symbol of evil, let's say. Um, 65 to 66, and she is the action card, so stepping into what happened. Um, so get out of your comfort zone and take bold action today. Newton's third law states, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The universe is a non-dualistic mechanical system, a unified energetic field. This is how your actions are actively correspondent and reflected to you. With every action you take, you set into motion a cooperative system of infinite magnitude. Every non-attached Every non-action is an action in the realm of consciousness. For every harmonic and loving action, there is a retribution of harmony in one's life. For every chaotic and harmful action, there is a pay payback for chaos in one's life. You are being called to take inspired action. Well, she did that. The universe desires for you to release the experience of paralysis through analysis. In fact, every non-action is an action in the realm of consciousness. By drawing this card, you have a divine appointment to go into silence and listen to the voice within through meditation or prayer. When you get out of your head and get into your heart, you will know what inspired action to take. You have a particular message and gift to give to the world. The energy that keeps you feeling stuck is the same energy that will keep you flying with inertia. Take action now. Call up someone and give them a love bomb today, meaning tell them how amazing they are and why you love them so much. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go on a limb here and say that that is pretty self-explanatory, but let's take from this the action part and how about everybody Um, connects with Maddie and shows Maddie love through calling someone up and giving them a love bomb today. Tell them how amazing they are and why you love them so much. So do that for Maddie by the end of the weekend. That's your homework. You have to do it because Maddie said so. Take action. And now for Kaylee, we have the law of perception and this is on page 85 and 86. Look beyond the illusion to the one truth. You are such a powerful spiritual being that the moment you even conceive yourself to be divided identity, you set universal law into motion. 
You inform your subconscious mind, the subjective mind, and the one mind in the blink of consciousness. All spiritual work is the shifting of the identity back to the I am identity. The universe has to agree with you how you believe life is, how you think life is, it is. You are divine. It seems you have been playing small at this game called life. By drawing this card, your higher self desires for you to no longer look to the outside world, to only seek the truth within. I have goosebumps. There is an almighty omnipresent presence with you now. There is an indestructible, absolute, and self-existing aspect of you. The universe is revealing through the law of perception that you can never be the effect of any circumstance. Your destiny is to experience your full divinity. Write down all of your perceptions of life. Where are the meanings you place upon yourself, people, places, and circumstances of life? Next, ask yourself, is this perception true? So this one I am going to explain a little bit because um, in the readings, we kind of got for Kaylee that, how do I put this? She wasn't necessarily seeing the dangers that Maddie was and Maddie was kind of being protective over her. So perception, I, I believe, is kind of realizing or stepping into the knowing that there was more to see um, in terms of what they were up against. Um, and also playing it small, this game called Life, Kaylee was stepping into this bigger role in her own life and going out and, you know, starting the next chapter. So I feel like that is the confirmation that she was able to complete or learn this law of perception and see things from a different point of view in order to gain the experience that she was meant to from this lesson. And then for all four of them, we have the Universal Law of Karma, which is pages 23 and 24. It says, you are being called to a higher purpose. Mic drop. Karma is the sum total of the choices made by the individual, collective, and cosmic consciousness. This includes all lifetimes, all creation, and all thinking. Everything that exists has been created from the first cause, spirit. Furthermore, each person is living out their specific lineage karma. The extent to which the collective uses the life force for harmony is the extent which we will create heaven on earth and vice versa. The disease factors caused by genetics are the sum of the actions upon that lineage. New karma is created via new thinking and new actions. Addiction or dysfunction may be knocking on a nearby door. By drawing this card, your higher self desires for you to heal and awaken, helping people remember who they are. At the core of who you are is pure goodness, eternal kindness, and an eternal givingness. The universe is reminding you to work for the highest good. Anyone that does not align with this law will take away their own divine powers, experiencing feeling disempowered. There is a loving energy in the universe, and you get to direct it because you are it. Make amends with anyone where there is discordance of energy. Make things right by giving of your time, paying back money, or giving of your time and service. Okay. Okay, so now I want to do some channeled songs from the four. Um, the cool thing about channeled songs is if you're someone who's been following this case and you are in any way emotionally invested in the case or the victims, you have your own connection. You have your own specific perception of how you feel or view the situation. So with these songs, I'm going to do five songs from each. Um, and I'm going to put up slides showing you what parts of the song stuck out to me. 
but you may get something totally different from the song. You may perceive it in a different way. You may get a, a message from it that I don't. And that's the cool part about channeling music is that everyone gets their own wave from it. Um, that's unique to how you perceive the situation or victims, etc. Um, I have this one silent because if I play the actual music, it, it's YouTube's going to say no. Um, so I'm going to channel five songs and then I'll put slides up showing you what the songs were. Um, and I will put links in the description for the song. So it's easy. Um, yeah, so let's go. Let's start with Ethan. Supernova by Ryan Carrero. Be a Light by Thomas Rhett. Let You Go by Machine Gun Kelly. Freaking Out by Arizona. And Ride by 21 Pilots. Xana. 17 by Julia Michaels. Anyone by Justin Bieber. Change by NF. Without You by Allie Gate. Is that four? Yeah, four. Homecoming by Justin Stone. I knew she was an old soul. That That is such a confirmation. Sorry, I'm playing the song in my head. One second. Um, Maddie, Champagne Dreams by Gabby DiMarco, DiMarcino, how do you say that? DiMartino, <laughs> Just You and I by Tom Walker, Until You Were Gone by The Chainsmokers and Tritonal, Where We Belong by Thriving Ivory, what is that? Legend by Ryan Carrivo. I think that was four. Nobody Compares to You by Griffin. And Kaylee. Come Through by Jeremy Zucker. One Big Country Song by Low Cash. Deep by Julia Michaels. Didn't Know Better by Ivan B. One Grain of Sand by Ron Pope. Okay, I'm going to put the slides up now with the parts of the songs. <laughs> 